It's Comics Are Great, the visual storytelling show recorded live. Uh, this is the last Wednesday at 12.30 Eastern Time at the Ann Arbor District Library, AADL.org. In lovely downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan, on the corner of 5th and William. As I said, this is the last one we're going to be doing on Wednesdays because we're going to take a holiday break. We're going to take a couple weeks off, and then we're going to resume uh, live episodes again in January, but we're going to be moving around the calendar a lot. I'll be talking more about that later as we close out the show because, after all, uh, I don't want to delay in any way in getting to our special guest today. I'm so glad we get to close out this season of the show with Dave Roman and Raina Telgemeier of GoRaina.com and uh, yaytime.com, irrespectively. <laughs> Go to both. Go to comicsbakery.com. <laughs> thanks, thanks, for, Jersey. thanks for being part of this, guys. I know you guys are super... What? Why are you covering your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> you got something in your tooth. Uh, no, but so, uh, man, oh, man, you guys, let's see. Let's, uh, we don't have to do an extended introduction. Uh, everybody knows what you guys do now because Raina Telgemeier is the Eisner-winning cartoonist. Uh, Dave Roman, what did you get? You got the Ignatz or something, right? Some, some lesser award. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, I got uh, best attendance. Uh, <laughs> you got the participation I, ribbon. <laughs> I, I showed up at every comic convention and got a little uh, sticker. <laughs> Actually, you know, this is something I was saying uh, pre-show a couple weeks ago when we were talking with um, Tony Cliff of DelilahDirk.com. Is, uh, Never heard of him. Yeah, I know. He's, 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 he's a small guy, but he's moving up the ranks. Uh, he's a dark is he horse. the guy who's into yoga? <laughs> is, he the, is he the yoga guy? It was really weird. There's all these Deepak Chopra books behind him and, yeah. and candles. Uh, it was, it's, people should really watch the video. Um, but, uh, you know, when we were talking about how, when I approached him to be on the show, he's like, oh, I've heard, I, I, I watch your show. Dave Roman introduced me to it. And I was like, do you know Dave is like the Kevin Bacon of comics? It's like everybody knows Dave <laughs> or Dave knows everybody in some way or another. And I don't know how many people have mentioned that they have heard of Comics Great because of you, Dave. So I owe you one. I shouldn't make fun. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and, and also, I, I, I want to say... Uh, People should, if you haven't checked out the audio episode, we did two episodes ago, which was our Muppets discussion with me and Dave. Dave knocked it out of the park. It was a really, really good episode. Uh, but the best part was when we, when we turned off the mic, we stopped recording, and I heard Rain <laughs> in the background go, Yay, Dave! <laughs> <laughs> I don't and remember it, that at all. Yeah, I, I, I totally, she was happy we were done. <laughs> oh, is that what it was? Yeah, it was like really late at night. And... She was waiting in the car. She had the car going and she was like, come on, we're late. Oh, that, 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 that's so sad because it made me feel so good just hearing it. I was like, you know, you should record an MP3 of that and put it on your website for sale uh, just to make people feel better about life. Like, oh, I had a rough day. And then just hear, have as a ringtone, yay, Dave, with Raina. Um, but anyway, so Raina, you've got a new book coming out, coming out one, uh, uh yeah, spring? September of 2012. Oh God, that's forever. I know it's, it's, it's barely even any important at this point. <laughs> I just, I just finished working on it. So, uh, the turnaround time, once you finish drawing a book and then the book actually coming out for a publisher like Scholastic is about eight months. And for a book publisher, like first second, it's a year. So wow. you've like forgotten about it. You've moved on. You've you, and then suddenly people want to talk about it. So <laughs> we can talk about it again next year. Yeah, she says she's done working on it, but she has a lot of work to do. Production work, yeah. Yes, and promotion work, and all the things that you the lead up to the book takes time. That's true. <laughs> I'm curious, like, what, could you describe that a little bit for people who aren't aware of this? I mean, a lot of people think that, uh, you know, once you got a publisher, it's just like, oh, it's smooth sailing. All I have to do is focus on making the book, and then I'm done, right? Just dust the hands off, and now the publisher takes care of everything, right? <laughs> um, mm. For some artists, it might be that way, but I'm pretty hands-on and uh, a control freak, so I want to be involved with every aspect of the production and the cover design and the interior design and so I'm working with a letterist and a colorist and I want to make sure that what they're doing works with what I'm doing. Right. Um, and then once the book gets shipped off to the printer, which I think happens in February, uh, promotion starts and that means I go to conferences and conventions and library events and school events just to start talking about it. And um, I just started talking about it for the first time last week. I did a sales conference at Scholastic. So a year in advance, all of the marketing people at the company want to know, hey, what does the author have to say about this book? So it was kind of terrifying because it was the first time I had spoken about what I'm working on sort of outside of the fact. I was like, I've been so close to it for 
so many months and years and now I get to bring it to everybody else and what do I say? Yeah. <laughs> How do you we, summarize a book, you know? Yeah, especially when you've been living with it that intimately for so long, right? It's like you have to distill yeah. your thoughts and you have to break it down into a digestible message. So it's yeah. not just to say, well, it's kind of about these kids who do this thing and they're yeah. on a stage and they're sad, you know? And I'm not great about digestible messages. I had to... Uh, my editor gave me the first bit of copy for the book, meaning like the summary that's going to go on a back cover. And it's just temporary right now. But I was like, oh, that's what my book's about. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's always nice to get other people's opinions to sort of get to what you're going to be saying about it. This isn't any eventually. <laughs> this isn't all that different. I mean, it's different, but it's not entirely different than what you do at conventions all the time. People come to no. the table saying, tell me about your book, right? Yeah. And here's the other thing that I want to underline is like everybody, you know, uh, public speaking is one of the top rated fears amongst human beings, right? Now, Dave, you've seen Raina present. I've seen Raina present. She's pretty good at this thing, yeah, right? She's, good. she's, she's <laughs> actually pretty awesome at, as you are. I've seen you do uh, workshops and presentations. You guys are both really good at it, but that doesn't take away the fact that you're terrified when you're doing it, right? Sure. So, so like anybody who's like, oh, well, that's all well and good for you. You're Raina Telgemeier after all. You're one of the, <laughs> the gifted people who's good at this stuff, right? But uh, none of us ever feel like we're really good at it, you know? No. But yeah, it's a learning curve. You throw yourself to the wolves, and then you make friends with the wolves. and then Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I'm... And then you ride the wolves. <laughs> I've been watching other people do this a lot for the past several years. Like, I used to go to Scott McCloud's lectures anytime I got a chance. If you're at Comic-Con and Scott McCloud's presenting, go see him talk, because he's a fantastic presenter and he's really interesting and he's got a slideshow and it moves really quickly and I, I sort of just try to take my cues from that sort of thing and the, the main takeaways show pictures and mm -hmm. you're, whatever you're talking about uh, it's on the screen and then people aren't looking at you that's my main advice to people about and presenting. I have not attended one of McLeod's lectures, but uh, I understand that he goes through a lot of slides. He doesn't dilly-dally. Yes. He doesn't hang out on a slide. And he doesn't uh, dress it up with a lot of text. It'll just be the image, and you're focusing on his words and the image. Uh, and one of the things I think a lot of people who use PowerPoint or like slide decks do uh, poorly or maybe not, maybe ineffectively, maybe I should say that, is they'll load it up with a bunch of bullet points and whatnot, and then you got to read while you're listening to the guy, and it's oh, like, oh, yeah. a lot of cognitive dissonance going on there. Like, just talk about what we're looking at so we have the soundtrack, and then we're not as focused on you as the presenter, right? I think if you're taking notes, like if you're at a seminar or something and you need to be taking notes about whatever the speaker is saying, that's fine, but this is comics. Just look at them and enjoy them. Are we having some audio issues? I'm, I'm noticing that the sound's cutting out on my headphones while we're... Okay, so people in the chat are saying that the sound's cutting out on you guys. Uh, oh, no. But, but I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you in one ear, so I'm sure the recording is going to be fine. Okay. Um, but anyway, I want, I want to fast forward because we don't have a ton of time. I want to talk to you guys about this festival that you went to. Uh, and then we're going to... What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the video and play it while we talk about it. Because you guys shot some video. Uh, you went to this <laughs> comics festival in France and uh, oh I'm gonna I'm gonna totally butcher the name so maybe one of you guys should say the name <laughs> it's no. called K de Bull K de Bull yeah <laughs> okay I didn't even know how to say it until I got there and people started saying it to me um, should I explain it Do you yeah, yeah well I, I'll just set it up with you were invited there you, they invited you to come there and present and and I hear that comics are uh, appreciated in a slightly different way in France than they are here in North America. Uh, but And I want to hear your experience to see if I was right about this. I remember when I was talking with you guys at SPX and you guys were like, oh, I'm so nervous about this. You know, we don't speak <laughs> French and, uh, you know, people are going to be mean because we can't speak French. And, and I, I remember saying, like, from what I understand, comics artists are like real celebrities there. So they're probably going to treat you guys pretty well. And from what I understand, you guys had a good time, yeah? You also pulled out your iPhone and said, I've got a translator on my phone. And I was like, oh, I think I need to get one of those. Uh, and we did. So that was good. Um, yeah, well, it came about because I had kept hearing about Angoulême. I think Angoulême is the comics convention in France that most American cartoonists are familiar with. And a lot of American cartoonists go to that show each year. Um, so I actually just asked the people at Scholastic, hey, would Achilleos, who is the French publisher of Smile, be interested in hosting me for some signings at Angoulême next year. Mm. <laughs> and like two and a half weeks went by and I didn't hear anything. And I figured, well, this is just not going to happen. So I'll stop thinking about it. 
And they came back and said, uh, well, they don't want to bring you to Angoulême, but they would like to bring you to Quai de Boo in Brittany. And that's happening in about a month. And we want you to go for nine days and do the festival and then do some stuff in Paris. And I was just like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> and I was under really, really big deadline crunches at that point. So I was I was also nervous about taking the time away from my desk. But it's it's impossible to pass up an opportunity like that. But it was interesting because we had never heard of Quai de Boo before. It's a little bit smaller. <laughs> and by a little bit, I mean Angoulême attracts 120,000 people and Quai de Boo attracts about 30,000 people, which is still huge by American comic convention standards. And um, it was hard to find information about it in English online. So we just kind of went and hoped for the best. And we did absolutely love it. It was a really incredible experience and I'm not even sure like where to begin with talking about how great it was but well I'm, I'm my, my my curiosity is in uh, like if you could do a kind of a comparison study like okay you you as Dave was pointing out you guys attend a lot of American shows what if you could highlight like three chief differences between your experience at this show versus at an American show like it, were there any like distinct uh, wow we don't it's when I table in the US it's not like this or vice versa? Uh, yeah. The first thing that, for me anyway, as a kids comics creator was apparent was there are so many kids at these things. And there's there's always kids at American comic conventions too, but these are kids who are fans. It's not a case of a kid who's coming because their dad wants them to get into comics. These are kids who have been into comics their whole lives. So you see... I mean, it's boys and girls. They're all different ages. They're all, um, a lot of families are there and a lot of like kids with their friends. So it's just like a sea of children, which is awesome. Yeah. And um, they're all really excited about comics too. And I have <laughs> experienced in the past that uh, when you see kids at American comic shows, let's just use San Diego Comic Con as an example. Most of those kids are there because they like superheroes, like they're wearing, you know, little Superman costumes and they're excited about the Teen Titans and they're excited about um, stuff that's really like imbe embedded in uh, American culture. And then they see something like an independently published book or a book that they've never seen the cover of before, something they're unfamiliar with. They won't just go, oh, what's this? Interesting. It's like they have to recognize it before they want to look at it. Mm -hmm. But in France, people just wanted to see everything. They just they didn't care if they had heard of it before. They didn't care if uh, it was a character they already knew. They just saw, oh, hey, a comic. Oh, it's about teeth. Oh, it's about it. Okay, cool. And they would just, you know, the parents were like, sure, let's buy it. <laughs> yeah, um, so there was like a sort of like a the people were there specifically to discover new it material. Felt that way. I yeah. mean, they're definitely the superstars of French cartooning, and those are the booths that have the biggest crowds at them. And uh, people will bring their chairs to stand in line so they don't actually have to stand, they'll <laughs> sit while they wait to meet their favorite cartoonist. Wow. <laughs> They've got their bread and a little bit of cheese <laughs> while they're waiting for <laughs> they some do, wine. They do walk around with a lot of sandwiches. Yeah. Sandwiches are big in France. Um, but, I mean, one of the other differences is that when you go to meet an artist, the artist will spend a really long time doing a, a special personalized drawing in your book. So you'll see people doing, like, elaborate watercolors and these really, like, beautiful ink sketches, and they spend a lot of time on every single book. So I don't know if the point is to sell like a volume of books so much as just to meet and greet with your fans and really give them something beautiful. And I was kind of warned in advance because I tend to do really simple sketches in my books that I needed to spend more time on my sketches. And I was like, ah, that will be interesting. So <laughs> I, uh, I bought a silver pen so I could do like detailing and the braces in every drawing um, and just spent more time on my pencil sketches and Inked them beautifully. And <laughs> that is an interesting one, and that, I think, kind of highlights a cultural difference there because if you are at a traditional comic, let's say you're at, like, a Wizard World kind of event, and if you have to wait more than 15 minutes to get a sketch, people are going to get angry. People are going to get really antsy. Unless you're super famous, yeah. Unless you're super famous, and even then they'll be like, oh, well, then you can uh, put in your request and then go walk someplace else and come back mm -hmm. and get it. But this sounds like it's more about actually 
meeting and talking with the cartoonist while they work with for uh, to create this thing for you too right you get that sense yeah there's just it's like a, a respect level that's just slightly different and i think a lot of american creators when they go to french shows are just you know they think they're just going to sign a book and then move on but no they want to they want to see you create something so did you what were the conversations like with the people who were uh, waiting for your sketches <laughs> Uh, mostly me saying, hello, I don't speak French. <laughs> but it, was, it was cool because a lot of uh, a lot of people in France learn English as their second language or they take it in school. And that starts when they're kids. And so since I was talking with a lot of kids, a lot of the kids actually knew how to speak a little bit of English and were kind of excited to try it out on me. Oh, and cool. in a few cases, the kids knew more English than their parents. So I was listening to the kids kind of translate to their parents what I was saying to them, which was just kind of a beautiful, unexpected thing. Um, so you know. it created an even like probably a more uh, visceral connection with the kid in that instance, yeah. right? They were kind of empowered in the situation, right? It was really cool. Um, and just, you know, I've never been to France before this, so I can do the whole, I've never been here. This is really nice. I really like this town. And, oh, I'm going to Paris next week. What do you know about it? And <laughs> um, Yeah. <laughs> I met a few people from other countries in Europe, like I met a German guy, and I took German in school, so I was able to actually have more of a conversation with that guy than I was with many <laughs> of my readers. But we were like, yay, now we're friends, okay. Darf ich auf die Toilette again? Yay, we're buddies. Awesome. Uh, Overall, it's the whole thing, I mean, this festival has like an art show component to it, so in another building there were these galleries that were set up beautiful, amazing galleries that were temporary. And it was hard to believe that they would be put up just for a weekend only to be taken. Because, you know, it was like displays and, and installations and stuff. Wasn't just like tacked to a wall kind of deal. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Super neat. And I don't know, just the town that it's in is such a magical place. The town is called San Malo and it is on like the coast and there's all these castles and... <laughs> little cobblestone streets. So the whole experience just felt like we were in this sort of Disneyland of cartoons and comics. Oh my and gosh. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, in the video that we played while you guys were talking, uh, there was lots of pictures of food. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and that was one of the things you were tweeting about the most, I think, was the all of the glazed foods that you were having while you were there. Yes, we did. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll let Dave talk about the food. No, no he no. doesn't want to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I guess crepes are the specialty of the region. So we ate crepes at least once a day, sometimes twice. Uh, it was like sugar overload the whole time. Mm. And the whole town is just brimming with like pastry shops and chocolatiers and croissant shops. And, you know, you can't walk too seconds without smelling in other bakeries sugar <laughs> smell coming toward you and oh <laughs> <laughs> oh man that sounds like such a good time but I, i'm i'm especially i'm especially taken with like this kind of assessment that like this this event i mean is it comparable to things like say mocha or spx where it's really about celebrating the 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 works of the cartoonists and not about like the mass media crossover and like oh we got angelina jolie or doug jones played the silver surfer let's get him in here and do a signing right <laughs> Definitely a celebration of creators. Yeah. And uh, do you want to speak more about that, Dave? Uh, yeah, I mean, Raina didn't really walk around the show as much as I yeah, did. Yeah, I want to hear from um, you on this. Like, yeah, the man. Yeah, the publisher had me signing for like eight hours a day. It was crazy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, so she was like, you know, like they really treat it like work there. Um, <laughs> like, I, like, I noticed that in America, like, if you, if a, if a publisher pays for you, to exhibit at a show, you're like, ooh, this is great. Oh, the publisher's paying for Oh, and all you gotta do is a little bit of sketching or a little bit of signing. It's like, you know, for most artists, that's like nothing. But in France, like, they're like, no, 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 we're really gonna make you work. Like, they feel like they're getting their money's worth uh, from the artist because they are doing these elaborate drawings and they are like stuck at that table, you know. <laughs> Stuck. Well, chain to the <laughs> chain to the table. Uh, that's awesome. For, you know, long shifts. Uh, of, 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 you know, sort of nonstop because you, there really weren't like long breaks no. between. I got a lunch break every day, but. Oh, you mean breaks between For customers? You. No, yeah, between customers. Um, it wasn't like compared to like an American show. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was sitting next to this girl who goes by the creator name of Mara, 
And she is published by Kelios also, and they're her sole publisher. She's not being translated from another language. So she had like a long line of fans from the moment the show opened till the moment the show closed. And they sat me next to her and I was like, that's cute. Wow, look at all her fans. Wow, look at all their chairs that they brought so they can sit and wait for her drawings. Um, and even when she wasn't at the table, they would wait in her line until she got back. It was just, it was so cute. Wow. And that, that was not the case with me. <laughs> uh, but I don't have an established fan base there. So like I said, though, people were so open minded that they, I mean, it was never more than 10 minutes between customers for me. And, you know, I would start to draw if nobody was there and people would get interested. And mm. the cover of Smile apparently is just eye catching enough that people would see my poster right above my head and then come see what the book was about. And it was, it was wonderful. I can't keep. I can't say that enough. I was. <laughs> it was a big honor. So for you me. had a good time. I take it. Yeah. Uh, but I want to hear. I want to hear, Dave. What, what, what's what's your assessment as the guy walking the floor? I mean, how did it differ from like walking the floor at an American show? Any any anything that jumped out at you as like, oh, that's unique. I mean, most the biggest difference is the the art styles, really. Mm. Um, at um, at, at any American show, with the exception of Amoka or SBX, um, it's usually superheroes first, and then sort of genre, maybe horror, detective, uh, and then sort of more alternative styles from there. Where in France, like the default style seems to be cartoony, mm -hmm. um, for lack of a better word. I mean, uh, you know, Tintin is like the realistic comic, you know, in some ways. <laughs> Um, a lot of the other stuff, I mean, like the Smurfs uh, is really sort of like the house style. Asterix, um, yeah. Yeah, Asterix. I mean, if there were going to be a house style, but there really isn't. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a real wide diversity of art styles, and it really feels creator-centric. Um, so I think that just just you know just being exposed to all these different uh cartoony styles is it, just walking around you just get a very different vibe um but there's some there's some over i mean they were really into manga in france too like there's definitely a lot of manga styles and a lot of books being imported uh from japan there as well um but i guess the biggest difference was that it was at this show it was all publishers there was no artist alley oh, okay. there was no sort of like um, Indie Island or anything like that where you would see it at an American show. Um, it really was just the publishers set up their tables and then they set up the times that their artists are going to sign at. So you didn't see people that were just sort of like going it on their own, uh, maybe buying their own tables and then trying to exhibit, you know, themselves. Like it was like if you didn't have a publisher setting a signing up for you, you, pretty, you, you probably weren't there. Interesting. Uh -huh. That's got to change the dynamic quite a it bit. Does. Yeah. Yeah. So that definitely felt. And but that was not something like I sort of didn't realize it at first. Like I was looking around and trying to figure out, oh, are these the indie publishers? Or, but um, talking with Raina's publisher afterwards, he explained it to me. You know, the sort of dynamic um, of the sh of the shows there in France is is very different. Um, where you don't have the thing like in an American show where I was saying like, oh, so you don't have this thing where maybe. Uh, you know, you can't find a publisher, so you get your own table at SBX, and maybe, you know, you sell a lot of comics, and then suddenly Top Shelf or Oni Press sort of like, you know, starts paying attention because they're seeing, oh, this guy really works hard, and this guy's got, you know, building up a fan base, let's publish him. Um, mm -hmm. this, the, the way it was explained to me was that that's a very rare uh, circumstance, that usually it's the publishers either decide to publish you or, or they don't, and if you don't get picked up by a publisher you don't do comics and there's also magazines for comics in france and that's the way that a lot of publishers start series out is they will publish uh short bursts it's kind of like the way it works in japan where they're serializing a a big magazine every month or whatever but it's in france they're not as big but um those are I, I can't remember exactly how it works like well that's the thing is it doesn't actually the publishers that's... and the magazines are tied together so it's like you have to start out doing a serial for a magazine and then the publisher will publish the book at the end of the year but it doesn't work the other way around you can't just bring a story to a publisher and say publish this book they're like no we don't want to take a chance on you unless we know that you're popular mm. but how do you get into the magazine in the first place? Um, 
I don't exactly know. It depends. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to. According to Bannister, that doesn't happen at all anymore. That, yeah. that now it's it's the. Our friend the, Bannister, the, because I don't know if everyone's familiar with Bannister, is a French cartoonist. Um, he's published in. Let's see, Cho magazine, and also Spirou, which is another one of the like kids comics magazines and this is one of his covers and he's been working with them for several years and now his stuff is being published in the US by uh, Graphic Universe slash Learner and his series is called Children of... oh wait, Chronic <laughs> Chronicles of Elsewhere, is that right? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, so he, he gave us kind of a crash the course. The Elsewhere Chronicles. The Elsewhere Chronicles, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> he gave us a crash course beforehand, like what to expect and you know what we should do and what how it works and uh, he's he's a very interesting person. He's also been in the flight anthologies here in the US, so that's how we got to know him. Mm. But um, yeah. Next question. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Butchering this. <laughs> it's complicated. <laughs> No, and you know, we don't, we don't, you guys obviously, you know, I, I wasn't trying to pick your brains about like how to get published in France, but what I was trying yeah, to get, no, at, it's just different. what I was trying to get at was like, what was the, like the cultural differences that we can learn from here in the United States. If it, I'm always going to come at this from a comics advocate standpoint as a guy who organizes events like kids read comics, right? It's like, I want to know <laughs> what do they do right so that I can incorporate something like that into kids read comics. Um, <laughs> well, we, when we were there, we were like, wow, this is what kids read comics could be in 20 years <laughs> if they keep doing things the way they're doing them now. That is what it felt like. Uh, you mean in terms of like the overall attendance numbers and everything? Just the types of people that were coming and yeah. what was there for them. Uh, I mean, kids read comics felt like a tiny version of Katie Boo. Okay. So, wow. Wow. That yeah. is an incredible compliment. You didn't have yeah. to say that. Uh, but, but it, you know, it's... I think about another stereotype that happens here in the U.S. is the guy at the Comic-Con who's a small-time publisher, publisher in quotes, like maybe his dad owns a printing press or something, you know, and so he's like, hey, I like comics, my dad's got a printing press, I'll start a comics company, and then he goes to the Comic-Con, and we've all heard of this guy, he'll go out into the aisle and bark at people, you know, and like wave his book around, like, hey, I've got limited edition, you gotta get in on this, he'll grab you by the arm, and people will be like, they'll just, when they leave his table, they're beleaguered, they're tired, they're, and then they'll walk by your table, and they're like, oh, I don't even want to talk to anybody anymore, you know? <laughs> I'm guessing you probably didn't see something like this at a show where really only big professional publishers are tabling, right? Yeah, because everybody there is already established and yeah. everybody already sort of has a reputation. So people just are either going to the publishers that they know and, you know, to meet the artists that they're already fans of or they're looking around to discover new things, but they already assume that they are quality because they're at the show. Mm -hmm. um, I think... The sense that I got is that if somebody doesn't buy something, it's just, well, well that's not my taste. You know, they, they, they just walk around and say, oh, well, that's, you know, I'm not into that. Um, but in a sort of like polite way that it's like, well, I can't buy everything. And these, <laughs> these books are not my taste. And I will go to the books that, you know, appeal to me. And, um, but there isn't that, yeah, like any, nobody's trying to prove themselves or nobody's trying to, ha nobody's working hard to like bring the crowds because, the crowds are kind of already there. Mm -hmm. when, when you have an audience that really has an at attitude and atmosphere of, of d let's discover something new, then you don't have to have that desperate barking kind of thing going on, do you? Uh, yeah. Which and there certainly were enough people to go around. That, <laughs> that's, that's how it felt anyway. Uh, what about, what about uh, the way they manage the traffic? You know, because like one of the things that happened at SPX this last year when I went is there were some bottlenecks. And I, from what I understand, this happens a lot at this show because it's, it's getting so popular that certain areas get bottlenecked really bad. And then the people, you'll watch them go by your table and they don't even want to look because they're so busy just trying to get out of this situation where they're smooshed up against other people, right? So, I mean, how do they, was the traffic managed pretty good then, like for the crowds? Uh, it was hard to say. I, I, I think in some places it was, in some places it wasn't. Um, I think what was just helpful was that there were multiple events going on. Um, there was the main convention floor, and then there was a gallery that was in another building, and then there was like movie screenings happening in another building. So that probably helped a little bit, but there was definitely some crowding issues mm -hmm. from time to time. There were definitely points where people were blocking tables because, okay. you know, their line was so long, it was blocking, <laughs> you know, other artists. Um, I don't, I can't speak to, you know, the organization of, you know, 
sure. show itself. I, I just they were all to... speaking French, so we couldn't yeah. understand what they were saying. <laughs> I just wanted to get like sort of like a, like a, a man on the street kind of like first blush kind of assessment of it. Obviously, you weren't in on the organization of the event. <laughs> but I think yeah. this was like this is like the thirty first year that they've done this thing, so they've they've had time to figure out what works and what doesn't. Mm. It's not yeah. it's not new. Good point. It is it is interesting that uh, you don't see independent artists there. Um, you know, that, 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 that is like the one negative thing I would say as, as a, a guy who stands on the indie side of the line. I would have loved to hear that there's, oh, there was also an artist alley, and it was this vibrant, really upbeat place. But uh, There might have been at other shows. Um, yeah. The other thing that I heard, you know, like every show supposedly has a little bit of a different flavor. Um, part of the reason supposedly that they brought Reina to uh, Katie Bull rather than uh, Angoulême was that supposedly Angoulême, the crowd would have been a little bit more intense and more less uh, family friendly. Um, supposedly this was the more family friendly show. No. So I think they felt that Reina would do a lot better with Smile um, at, this, at this show specifically than at the, at the larger show. Um, so I think there, you know, there are other smaller shows that happen during the year as well that might have a little bit more of a indie flavor to them. Um, but I don't know the people I talk to, because of course I come from indie comics as well, so I'm always curious about that aspect as well. Um, and most of the French cartoons I talked to acted like there wasn't, you know, there's, the scene just wasn't as large as it is in America, and that even like web comics was not as large of a scene as it is here in the States where you have lots of cartoonists doing internet comics and just putting their stuff online. Um, supposedly there are, you know, there are a few, but he's, but the, like they said, it was, it was a much smaller uh, group of people doing that. So you don't have things like web comics weekend or anything like that. Uh, or at least if, if, if they it, might, I don't well, know. Right. They, they could, but the, the people you were talking to hadn't heard of anything like that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I mean, you guys, how how long were you there? Like a couple days? Yeah, the convention was three days, um, and then we were in Paris for two days mm -hmm. after that. So hardly enough time to get a sense yeah, of exactly. an entire country. <laughs> Let's be fair. God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're not experts. No. They, they didn't give you a car or anything, did they? No. <laughs> uh, I've heard I've heard that in some cases they would give the cartoonist a car for a weekend. Here, take a car. You know, you enjoy yourself afterwards. Oh. <laughs> no. No. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we but, went to a lot of dinners, though. That, that was nice. Yeah. And uh, the trains there are great. So we took trains anywhere we needed to go. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> no, no. Okay, so let me... No let me... cars. <laughs> <laughs> favorite interactions. Do you have any favorite interactions? Like, a, like an anecdote of like, oh my gosh, this was the moment uh, over the weekend. Both of you, from both of your perspectives. Uh, well... Dave was like observing this little family at one point. There were these three kids. They were probably all under 10. And the youngest kid was maybe two or three. And he had a blanket, just like Linus. And he was like going around with the blanket and like shoving it in his sister's face. And she was like taking it in her teeth and like biting it. And they were like playing around. It was really cute. And like their older sister was just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so Dave did this drawing of these three kids. And he doesn't speak French, but he just went over to the kids and, like, tapped them on the shoulder and just handed it to them. And they were, like, them and their parents were just like, oh, my gosh, that was <laughs> that was so funny. Um, that, was, that was enjoyable. Uh, I don't have any, like, specific, this kid was the kid, because most of them spoke only a little bit of English. Mm -hmm. um, but... I met so many of them, and so many of them were like 12-year-old girls, and you don't see that many 12-year-old girls at any given convention here, so the fact that the sheer numbers were there just made me feel like, I have a purpose for being here. This is awesome. That That is actually really interesting, and that, that is something that, uh, you know, it's it's a hot-button topic with a lot of people, and I don't want to set anybody off in this whole, like, we got need more women in comics, let's get them reading superhero books, let's get them reading whatever, but, uh, you know... The few, the limited amount of conventions I go to every year, and maybe you guys can correct me on this assessment, is that I see a lot of kids, more and more kids at these shows all the time, but it's always the kid who's being dragged there by his dad who's like, hey, I'm a Captain America man, you're going to be a Captain America man, get over here and let's buy some Captain America together. Um, and rarely do I see any young girls, especially like 12-year-olds. Like if you see girls, it's like usually like like six, right? 
and they're dressed up in a superhero costume with the parents or whatever. And obviously not at SPX or at MoCA or those kinds of shows or at um, TCAF or anything like that, but uh, but at, at the, the traditional shows in the United States. So interesting that there'd be so many girls there who are actually probably because there's the material there that they're interested in, right? Exactly. Yeah. The, if you make it for them, they'll come to, and read it. That's that's really what I can see is that if more people here create more work for that that demographic, then you know you'll see the readers come to you. And, and that's what I've experienced over the past couple of years is that, you know, these young girls are coming to comic conventions because they want to meet me or they want to meet, you know, other creators that are doing work for them. Actually, on that subject, we should show some of the <laughs> books. Like, oh, yeah. Just in terms of, like, you know, what's on the cover of these books, like, sort of tells you a lot of, uh, you know, just, like, walking around the shelves and seeing the types of... Uh, Comics. Um, I don't know how well we can get this get in the close. camera. Here, yeah. I'll let you do it. Yeah. There we go. Um, mm-hmm. But there's just lots and lots of series, uh, like really popular comic series that were some of the biggest comics there. Um, that are, you know, girl characters are just the protagonist. You know, like just the main characters are girls. They're clearly marketed to girls. They're not trying to like hide the fact that they're four girls. They're definitely... <laughs> and yet Dave has a photograph that he took of all these boys standing around reading this book <laughs> called Les Sisters, which is so awesome. Yeah, this the Les Sisters uh, series. Yeah, there was like... <laughs> There were like hundreds of boys, like, ooh, I can't wait to... to well, let's... Like, let, a lot of girls, too. Let's be fair, Dave. You would have read that book when you were a little kid, wouldn't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Actually, the, I mean, the main reason why we picked that one up was because it looked really... Uh, looks like me and my sister. It looks like Raina and her sister Amara, who... she Raina's been talking about doing more comics about her sister, uh, and we were looking, and I was like, wow, now she doesn't have to <laughs> <laughs> just translate them. <laughs> you know, we've got, like, princesses and cakes and cute, cute, cute costumes and... Um, and so much. My absolute favorite was uh, one called Mamet. That's a little about, like a little grandmother uh, character who's like this, like little sprightly grandmother. <laughs> um, it's like really hard to see, but it's these beautiful, beautiful uh, atmospheres. It's like fall cover. Um, but this cute little adorable old lady. Um, <laughs> but it's like sort of reminded me of like Up, where you know it's like oh it's a it's an adventure or it's a it's a comic for kids about a senior citizen, um, <laughs> which. You know, it doesn't sound like it would, you know, be popular, but <laughs> right. Um, but it's a really, really great series, um, and I think uh, we sent you one of these. Yep. This is uh, yeah. Hotel Etrain uh by Catherine and Florian Ferrier, who you know, like this style, I think would appeal to both boys and girls. It looks. It, it reminds me of like it's in the same family as Tove Jansen. Of, yeah, uh, that's Moomin. what I thought too when I first saw it. I was like, oh, it's a Tove Jansen and uh, Richard Sala. Mm. Um, these like cool monster characters and And the cartooning is so solid that I mean I can read these books even without knowing more than three words of French. That that is a good testament to a book too. Yeah. yeah. It's like I've got some manga that are only in Japanese and the artist is so good I can get I can glean the story. I, I'm not getting all the subtle wordplay jokes, but I, I'm getting what the story is essentially about because it's so, so clear storytelling. But yeah, yeah, that's a good point is is that uh, you know, these are the books that uh, a lot of web cartoonists are doing this kind of stuff, though. It's just that uh, they're not. There's no place where they're really all congregating uh, to get those 14, 12 to fourteen year old girls to show up. So maybe we should get them at Kids Read Comics. <laughs> <laughs> there's my call to everybody. I, I mean, I was. I, 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 who was I talking to? I don't want to. I don't want to name names uh, on the air of, of a private conversation. But some people who do stuff like that have expressed an interest in going, and I hope they do. But um, it's going to be tough, though, given that it's July seventh, right before Comic Con. So, yeah. <laughs> so you guys aren't going to be able to make it. But with any luck, I'll be able to actually meet you guys up at ALA. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to work out some money-making scheme to, to, to fund my trip to, to ALA and uh, Anaheim, right? Disneyland. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, Anaheim. Okay. Well, um, Sharon Iverson should be here any minute. Uh, I want to give you guys a chance for any closing thoughts on your experience in, in France. I guess every, every cartoonist should go, even just to um, attend the shows. It's really inspiring, and even going to Paris, which we haven't touched on, but there's like a comic store on every corner in certain neighborhoods, and what? it's just gorgeous, gorgeous in stores. In certain neighborhoods, not I every said that. <laughs> I emphasize that, because we didn't find them until the last day we were there. No, but once we did, we were like, oh my god. <laughs> The and comic there, stores there are great. And it they was have, like the Android's dun- dungeon, right? It was a big, mean-spirited guy working behind the counter. 
No, we're talking like multiple layers and just back rooms and and sections full of kids comics and uh it was amazing. Yeah, and we we had already bought a lot of stuff at the festival, so we didn't let ourselves buy anything when we were in Paris, but I would have liked to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm 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 a pretty big cheerleader for our country. I do think that being a U.S. citizen is pretty darned awesome for the most it is part. Pretty darned awesome. But whenever I hear about this kind of stuff in France and then in <laughs> Japan, I was like, ah, oh, really? You know, well, Japan not as much because I've seen what a typical manga artist's work schedule is like, right. and, and I'm like, oh man, that's brutal. No, I don't think I could handle that. But but when I hear stories about whenever I hear somebody who uh, from somebody who's been to France and a, a French comics festival, I'm like, oh god, that sounds amazing. That sounds like what it's supposed to be like here. Yeah. For me, I just want to see more just cultural exchange. Like, I don't want it to be about, oh, France is the great place or Japan. Is I, li I like seeing, you know, books being translated. Mm -hmm. um, it was really cool to see some, which American comics were translated into France, into French, and like walk around and be like, oh, you know, there, there is a French audience for this American book. Um, like, that really excited me. And then wishing that more of these French comics were being translated into English so that we could read them. Um, because, you know, there's so much crossover appeal, I think, that um, it always disappoints me when people say, oh, there's no market for this here. You know, these, <laughs> these you know, Americans wouldn't appreciate, you know, these French comics or, or the French don't appreciate this American sensibility. Um, yeah. You know, I'd like to think that there's, there's a lot Nonsense. more overlap. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, if my comics workshops are any indication, uh, I, on a regular basis, it's a three to two ratio girls to boys in these comics classes. And I'll ask them every time I see this kind of grouping, I say, well, what, what got you into comics? What made you want to come here? Uh, well, I just love to draw and I love The Lion King. <laughs> you know, and and they're not coming at it because, oh, I read Captain America and that's what I want to draw when I grow up. And then so like when I asked the librarian to bring out some books to, you know, to for the kids to check out, they'll they'll bring a smattering of like a lot of different kinds of things. And the stuff like Moomin, if anybody has that in their collections, that flies out of there with the 12 year old girls, you know, and then yeah. Smile. Every time I bring up Smile, there's at least 10 to 30 percent of the girls in the room who will gasp audibly <laughs> that I know Raina Tel Telgemeier. I mean, every class. <gasps> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they make jazz hands. Uh, <laughs> I'm working on getting teen boat to that level in my classrooms as well. Uh, so speaking of, well, any other closing thoughts before we switch to uh, Sharon Iverson, who just showed up? You guys can't uh, see her, but she's here. Comics for presents this year for <laughs> holidays. That, that's yeah. true. Yeah, comics for Christmas presents. Yes. Yeah, I, I, that, I did do that. I, uh, Anne put me in charge of buying gifts for the extended family this year. So I said, you know what? Everybody's going to get comics, and they're going to get comics from independent creators. Mm -hmm. So I got Mark Mariano's Happy Lou for a couple of my nieces and nephews, <laughs> Casey Van Heys's Winters in Lavelle, uh, Jonathan Griffith's Beyond the Canopy. Uh, I'm giving a lot of links for poor Eric in the chat to find. Uh, BeyondTheCanopy.com, WintersInLavelle.com. Uh, mypelmark.com or where you can, can find I make Watchmen. another suggestion? Oh, Watchmen. Watchmen. <laughs> <laughs> Watchmen. Can I, can I recommend one more for the table? Yes, please. Table? Um, this is a book called Picket Line by a creator named Brina Wiederheft, and I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, her website is easelainteasy.com. And she also has a website called, or a, a webcomic called Easel Ain't Easy. But it's a story about a girl who gets like, sort of wrapped up in this logging uh, issue in Northern California. So it's like the loggers versus the hippies. And she's completely torn between these two worlds because everybody on both sides is really nice. Um, it's really interesting. And I just read it. And uh, she's a Zarek Grant winner from last year. So the book is just out now. And um, yeah, I'd go to her website and check it out. It's really cute. The drawings are just completely adorable. And she has a really great cartoony style, and I really enjoyed it. So I wanted to give her a little plug. Cool, cool. And that that's I, I love it when I get a recommendation like that where it sounds like, oh, here's here's a book. It's about a trade referendum in Spain, and <laughs> uh, and like the kids don't have enough shoes. And I'm like, yeah, it's, I'm like, it's what? not that dense. <laughs> and, that, and, that, and then you read it, and you're like, oh my god, this is the most compelling thing ever. That that's that's the magic that only cartoonists can do, in my opinion. <laughs> Uh, so, yes, uh, awesome. I'm guessing Dave is getting a recommendation, too. Is that why he's off camera? No, no. I'm not. Uh, <laughs> yeah, out of the way. So you can't, you, you can't see her, but you'll see her on the video after the fact. Uh, as Ryan Estrada just said in the chat, the comics Don is in the house. <laughs> the comics Don. 
don't know where this came from. <laughs> Actually, I do. It's the person sitting. There it's here. a nickname I came up for you, uh, uh, come up with for you, and I hope it sticks. Yeah. But, but uh, Sharon Iverson of AADL.org is here, and uh, you've got some book recommendations too. I take it. Sure. Um, yeah, it's funny you were talking about comics for gifts because I was like, when am I going to get my four-year-old niece? And then I thought of Nemu Nemu for um, her. Enough. Yeah, you Nemu know. Nemu so Nemu it's another like, one that I got. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm thinking comics too that make uh, great gifts for the holidays. Um, I just brought a couple series along that I imagine have been out a little while. One is called Bakuman, and you were making a comment when I came in about uh, being a manga artist. Oh, my gosh, I don't think I could do it. This basically is a series about two 14-year-old kids who team up and attempt to get published. Um, uh-oh. No, that's all right. Don't worry about okay. it. Okay. Um, who attempt to get their work published in Shonen Jump. And so it's sort of like... A um, lot of manga that just explains how all this stuff is done, but it's like, oh my gosh, the work that is involved. And and one of the two 14-year-olds' n- uncle was um, a manga artist and was running series in Shonen Jump and then kind of got dropped by the magazine, so drama, drama. And he thinks the uncle committed suicide, but no, he worked himself to death trying to get back the the magic and get his manga published. So, you know, you've kind of got that hanging over their heads, you know, how much are they willing to go, you know, to, to do the, to get published and so forth. They're just driven. Um, The other one is an adult series that Dennis from Comics Fundamentals and from, um, he was at the Make the Comics last week or yeah last Thursday night the unwritten by Mike Carey and Peter Gross and there's five volumes um, that tell the story about um, Tommy oh boy Tommy Tommy He's uh, Tommy Taylor, who's um, both a fictional character and a real person. The fictional character is kind of the equivalent of Harry Potter. His Mm. father, Wilson, is the creator of this whole Tommy Taylor series and um, has disappeared. And now there's, as you read the story, kind of wondering, is the real Tommy Taylor's son also the character? And it begins to suck you in. There's there's an evil force um, that may be changing stories, fiction. Um, Tommy, is he the character? Is he who he thinks he is? Mm. Um, it gets weirder and weirder. I've gotten through volume three, and Dennis said, I think you'd like that. And I was like, oh, my gosh, yes. You know, <laughs> totally sucked me in. So those are the two series that, that uh, I'm currently reading or have been reading. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for those. Uh, any uh, events coming, coming up? up? Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you got coming up? Well, starting Saturday, I think you're going to be at Mallet's doing something. Uh, uh, oh, oh, the art show. <laughs> yeah, we got an art show at Mallet's Creek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, and that's going to go through the 30th of January. It's uh, comics, visual storytelling, comics, and illustrations by you and Anne. Me and Andros. And I'm very excited that we're having a comics exhibit um, here at ADL. It's long overdue. 25 pieces, and it's all process stuff. It's the finished page, and then it's the pencils, and it's the sketches. Mm -hmm. Sort of like the show that you guys were in here. Uh, Dave and Raina back when, uh, what was that, in June uh, Mm -hmm. at the River Gallery. Yeah, yeah. So that's coming up. And then in January, um, we have our first um, comics forum of the new year with Rob Stenzinger, our first Skype artist. Mm -hmm. And that'll be kind of fun to see. Um, how the weather compares in Minnesota versus Ann Arbor versus um, at that and point. And he's going to be projected on a big screen up on the yeah. fourth floor conference room. Yeah. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. And then we have um, also in January, so um, I should say January 8th is the um, Comics Forum, and that's from 1 to 3 at the Downtown Library. And then on the 15th, we encourage any comics artists who are in the area um, to come and take advantage of our lab that has Photoshop Element loaded on, and you'll be available mm-hmm. to assist anybody who wants to do some finishing work. We can scan artwork, or people can bring their scanned artwork in and get some some finishing work, cleanup work done. It's not a class. It's an open no. lab. Yep. And I'll just be there for anybody who needs help with anything. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty cool that you guys offer that with, mm-hmm. your, with your Macintosh lab. Uh, I got some other things I want to point people at. 
Uh, I got one more classy thing. Classy. Class. Workshop-y. <laughs> not classy. If I'm involved, it's not classy. Uh, it's a, it's a, a sound effect workshop I'm holding on leanintoart.com, and it's uh, how to design. It's a three-day event. It's uh, the 7th, 11th, and 14th of January. Uh, you can take a workshop online. It's time sh- You can do, take it as a time-shifted course or as a live interactive workshop where I'm going to be walking people through how to design sound elements in Adobe Illustrator, whether it's doing a sound effect or sound balloons or a whole lot of different things. It's in the information's at leanintoart.com. But this is with other promotional things I wanted to get through. Dave, it's the holiday season and I know that you really, really like the holidays. Um, <laughs> I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you made some Christmas mixes and oh, yeah. I wanted to point people at that because I, I got your, your Halloween mix and that was awesome. Uh, so you've got uh, on yaytime.com slash blog slash Christmas dash music. Uh, you made some uh, mixtapes for us all. I yeah. thought that was, that was super cool of you. So uh, uh, go ahead. Yep, yep. I, I enjoy Christmas music, even though uh, you're not supposed to, I guess. <laughs> really? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we uh, we like sharing CDs with our friends who also like Christmas music, and I put them up on my website for anybody who wants to download them. Any Mitch Miller on there? Uh, no. Do you, do you not like Mitch <laughs> Miller? Um, I'm sorry. I don't know who that is. Oh! <laughs> Oh, 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 now I'm going to send you a CD. <laughs> yeah, but it's not its not the same, Dave. you got to have the bouncing ball with the words at the bottom. Oh, like karaoke? So, yeah, it's got to be like... visual, and, and it was always the bouncing ball, so you could sing along with Mitch. It's Yeah, sing along with Mitch. And Mitch Miller's 60s, 1960s Oh, my thing. gosh, uh, yes. Yeah, like like 100 deep, deep-throated guys singing along. Mm. With... <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, and that's been a staple in my household forever. That and, like, the Bing Crosby 1945 uh, holiday CBS special. Special, where it's like all he parades on a whole bunch of different people singing, uh, but he then they interrupt it with different advertisements for craft cheese spread. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the great thing about those ads is that they um, they never say like you know today they're like go out and buy it now. And in, in, in this old radio show, they're like make sure to put it on your shopping list and get some tomorrow. It's like oh so low <laughs> pressure. That's great. <laughs> I don't know if you listen to any of that stuff like the old Bing Crosby radio. Yeah, shows. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, I love that stuff, um, and I especially love those craft commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Which they continued off for a long time because they did like TV commercials too, where certain Christmas specials would just get sponsored by Kraft. So there would be the one commercial between all the segments, <laughs> and it would just be like, yeah, it would just be like, just sort of wetting your appetite for all the great things you could do with Kraft cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Zestful Roca, or uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then let's see, I wonder anything else. Oh, okay, so. This is where I'm going to do a double thing, and I'm going to promote you guys, but also uh, thank Sharon for this last year of awesome, awesome stuff that you've oh. done for us. Uh, I went out and purchased for you for Christmas a oh. Team oh, Boat shirt. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look at, where can I show this? I'll lay it out here. So, yes. That this- is so cool. <laughs> I'm gonna so, take it. To, I'm gonna take it to Kansas City with me when I go. Woo. So yes, this is this is me and Ann wanted to, Ann and I wanted to say yeah. thank you, and in behalf of all the co- people who you've, you've affected this year through Comics Work, we want to make sure we thank you somehow. And I thought, what better way than get a really awesome oh, team yeah. boat shirt? Thanks. Now, we got this on camera. We got Sharon's resp- <laughs> reaction to this. If you want to make somebody that happy this year. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can go to comicsbakery.com slash oh no it's yaytime.com slash bakery slash comicsbakery.html but just go to comicsbakery.com and click the store link yeah. uh, you guys are selling a bunch of shirts for like 10 bucks yep Wow. Yeah. More Christmas ideas. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and there's some awesome Astronaut Academy shirts on yeah. there. Uh, and actually, these are kind of uh, rare OOP shirts, right? That's because right. the Astronaut <laughs> Elementary on them. Uh, <laughs> smile shirts. Um, but yeah, yeah. So I got I got a handful of shirts for people who I care about. Thank you. And, well, no, thank you for this oh. awesome year of, of comic stuff at AADL. So um, and you, you you enjoyed Teen Boat so much that I thought, wow, well, yeah, I'll grab this for Sharon. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So that's at comicsbakery.com. Anything else that we want to make? Oh, oh, the last thing I want to mention is uh, Teen Boat is coming out in the spring. Yes. Yes. Uh... April. Mm, yeah, yeah. Sure. I keep forgetting. I think it's <laughs> April or May. <laughs> Larry on books. <laughs> Larry on books. 
Uh, yeah, Clarion Books. You'll hear more about it as it gets closer. Yeah, absolutely. We'll make more noise about it. But the thing we can do now is we can go to Goodreads and put it on our to-read list, which would be helpful to Dave uh, to let the publisher know that, hey, lots of people are interested in this book. Uh, I, Sharon loaned me the pre-pub copy, so mm-hmm. I'm reading it now, and it's mm-hmm. pretty It's pretty. It awesome. is <laughs> funny, isn't it? It's yeah. a really good yeah. book. Uh, so, yeah, John Green uh, did the art, and man, Dave, you did not do that guy any favors with some of those scenes that you're asking for. Okay, 12 <laughs> cop cars jump into the scene and smash through a thing. He turns into a boat, and then he flies through a city, and it's like all this perspective work. I'm just thinking, man, yeah, you got somebody else to draw that for you. Smart oh, yeah. move. <laughs> but, no, God bless John Green. He really, like... You, you think you're like, oh, like at a certain point I do sort of put, it's like, you don't have to do all of this, but he always goes the extra mile yes. and like, <laughs> at, you know, it's not just cop cars, it's cop cars driving down a stadium, you know, like with like stadium seating and, yep. and then like, let's put columns in the stadium and let's, and let's have put- uh, monster trucks in the background. <laughs> and- but it's all really crisp and clean and just spot on perspective work. It just looks fantastic. So, and I mean, there's a scene where... Teen boat has a crush on a girl, but there's this jerk who's making time with the girl, and they're riding in the gondola that he also has a crush on because he's a teen <laughs> and a boat. Man, that's so good. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 really one of those books where I'm like, damn it, I wish I would have thought of this. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it both makes me happy and sad at the same time. But anyway, people should go to Goodreads.com, and uh, we'll, we'll link in the show notes to uh, to you know get. Uh, the, 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 the Goodreads page where you can say, hey, I'm, I'm going to read this. And are you still, if it's any librarians or uh, book reviewers listening, is, are you still doing the pre-pub uh, thing? Um, no, we don't have any more of the uh, advanced reader copies. Um, but what I am going to be doing, actually, if you go to yaytime.com or uh, go to uh, my Google Plus page, now that I finally have a Google Plus page, um, <laughs> I'm going to be uh, sending out free Astronaut Academy bookmarks to any librarian or bookstore uh, or teacher uh, that wants free bookmarks. I printed up these new Astronaut Academy bookmarks that I'm going to be sending out free of charge. Uh, all you have to do is send me your address. Oh, we, we had um, one more question from the chat. I'm sorry that I've overlooked this. Uh, I mentioned that I was going to re- respond to it. Um, could Raina give us the author's name of Mehmet again, please? Trying oh. to research it on the web. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's got the best name ever. His, his name, the author of Mehmet is Nob. N O B knob. <laughs> that <laughs> or should maybe help. it's nob. <laughs> or maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's N O B. They tend to knob. drop the last step. Um, and actually, you know, you can actually get the Mamet books and uh, all the French comics that we mentioned. Like some, you can actually buy them through Amazon. Um, Eric is in the chat posting links right now. Gosh, Eric, you are awesome. <laughs> um, so a lot of these these comics are really worth it. Uh, Pay the pay the extra shipping uh, fee to get these. And AADL has a foreign language section. Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> so okay, cool. Uh, so I guess I'll wrap up. I, I do have one more announcement to make. That's really important. Is that this is the last show of the year, the last live show of the year. We're gonna take a couple week break over the holidays, and then uh, in January, uh, early January, we're going to resume with the live shows. But it's not necessarily going to be on Wednesdays at twelve thirty p.m. Eastern time. Uh, we're going to be moving around the calendar a little bit and trying different times of days to see what kinds of uh, live attendance we get. You know, do a night show, do a day show, and also in deference to some of the guests we want to get on the show. Not everybody uh, is is generous with their time as Dave and Raina. Some people are <laughs> a little bit more strict in when they can make themselves available for us. So um, thanks, guys, for being part of the, the last show of the year. Oh, no, bro. Thanks for having us. Congratulations on a successful 2011 of Comics Are Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it, 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 thank, congratulations to you guys because you guys really, you know, it was probably a, a hard slog, but it sounds like a lot of cool things happened this year for you guys. Did. It's been a pretty good year. Yeah. Definitely. And so, next year's going to be even crazier. Yeah. So. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you look we, good, we though. Got, we got a lot of books coming out next year, so yeah. we're going we're gonna to be on the road and... Uh, doing as many things as possible. I hope you can make it to Michigan at some point or another. You better, I'm going to have to come to you. Uh, okay. Well, Raina, Raina Telgemeier can be found at GoRaina.com. Go Raina on Twitter. Raina Telgemeier on Google+. Uh, what other places do you hang out? Uh, the um, I have a Smile Facebook page. So <laughs> if you look up my name on Facebook, you'll find that. Uh, but Twitter and G+, are probably the, the, best, the best places to find me these days. 
And that, that's where people, if they want to share a few kind thoughts about the book, that'd probably be a good place to do it because then it's just like a quick little blast. Hey, I love the book. And then. Yeah, that's but, always nice. Yeah. Yeah. And so <laughs> you, you don't have to send like the long email. You just say, hey, Raina, I love the book and this is my favorite part. Thanks. Bye. You know, <laughs> that, that's how. 40 characters or less. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how I prefer my, my uh, uh, pleasant uh, exchanges with people because like when I get a, like a long email, it's like, oh, I feel like I have to give an equally long email back. You know, I feel really guilty when I just send, thanks for the kind words. Bye. You know, but on Twitter, <laughs> that, that guilt is kind of removed, you know. So uh, and then Dave Roman is at yaytime.com. Yaytime on Twitter. Uh, Dave Roman on Google Plus. And do you have a Facebook page, too, for yep. Astronaut uh, Academy? Yep, there's an Astronaut Academy fan page, and then there's also just my Facebook page, too. Cool. And then, Sharon, uh, you are at AADL.org. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! I may be the last to get on Google+, Plus, but it will happen. It might be 2012 now. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing's really happening over there. No offense, but it's, it's still kind of quiet, as far as I can tell. It's just like... Jersey and Brian Estrada. And <laughs> yeah. <Mike. laughs> it's like you guys are keeping that thing going for sure. but Yeah, you know, I, I got really excited when it came out because I thought this is the place where I can actually be social with, the, like, like, I made, like, a, a, a circle of, like, here's the 20 people who I want to hear from every day. And only, like, two or three of them post on any kind of regular basis. And yeah. Raina's <laughs> one of them, and then Ryan Estrada is one of them. And so it, it's like I try to post every once in a while like a silly thing to like try to get something going and then, you know, I'll get a couple of responses, but not much. So it's kind of a bum out sometimes that it's <laughs> I, I got to figure out like what kind of tantalizing thing can I put on there that will get my friends to actually interact with me. <laughs> uh, but I think I think also there's that, that, that notion of even though it's a private circle, it feels public a little bit when you're posting on there. And, uh, you know, I, I've just been checking out this new thing called Path. Have you guys heard of this? There's a new thing. It's yeah, it's yet another one, and that's what I did too. And and then I looked at it, but the, the the headline of it that I thought was really interesting was is that share things with your loved ones, which is like a pretty explicit statement of well, you know, that means you're not broadcasting, and it's not broadcasting. Like there's no public site for it; it only exists on smartphones, like on Android or on um, iOS. And you, it's just like how Facebook started, where it's like it, everything is absolutely private except for those you explicitly share with. So like I've been goofing around on there with Casey Van Heis a little bit, and it's like I posted my first negative thing on the internet, uh, like where I like <laughs> said like I had a rotten time doing this thing, you know, and I felt like I can actually do that now because this is really just between me and Casey. It was the first time I ever felt like. Oh, I'm interacting in this is like the, the at the bar conversation. Oh yeah, yeah, I read all those. Those were good. I read those. Shut up. <laughs> 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 but anyway, K but I, Casey was mirror mirroring those on her Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you can post the Tumblr from it if you want to. But I was like, why would you want to? You know, it's like this is stuff where it's like I'm posting my location and stuff. I don't want people to know that. It's like, oh, I'm eating at this place. Here's a picture of me crying while eating a sandwich. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you know, it's like, it's like it, what, my, my point is, is that when I was using this, I realized that, oh, that's why people probably don't post to Google Plus all that much because it feels like even though it's in a private circle, <laughs> it feels public. And so you, you, there's that pressure to not overshare or to not share something that's silly or stupid or whatever. But it's, it's you know, anyway, uh, that's what texting is for, I guess, if mm -hmm. you want to have a private conversation with your friends. Or Quick. Going outside. Yeah. Outside. <laughs> Not that I ever go outside. <laughs> yeah, but all the people I care about don't live in Michigan, except for Sharon. <laughs> How about your wife? <laughs> oh, well, there's her too, but that's a given. <laughs> Great, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas to me. Uh, man, I'm not getting you guys back together one room again. I, I'm getting too hard of a time. I can might get Paul's story in here and the collection will be complete. All right, so um, thank you guys, everybody, for being a part of this. And thanks, everybody, for downloading and listening. And this will be uh, collected as a, as a podcast at congressaregreat.com slash CAG4242. And uh, we'll see you guys again in January. So until then... Uh, I've been Jersey Joe's of comicsgreat.com and Jersey on Twitter. Okay, bye. <laughs>